I have a massive amount of peppers to harvest and preserve today, so let's get started. We're getting an early start in the garden today because I also want to preserve and put up these peppers today too. I want to get it all done in one video for you guys. So I figured I would start early. Most of the peppers that we're going to be picking are over here in the long 12 foot beds. So let's go over there. And the main reason I grow peppers is to make a pepper powder seasoning mix that I really like using for cooking throughout the year. So I'm going to show you how to make that after we harvest these peppers. This is the lemon drop pepper. This big bush behind me is the lemon drop pepper. I got this pepper for free from a local seed swap, so I'd never grown it before, and I wasn't really sure how spicy it would be, and I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just Googled how spicy it was, but <laughs> it's pretty spicy. <laughs> kind of a funny story on that. I brought it into the house. I asked Ryan to take a little bite of it first before I did to test how spicy it was, because with me nursing, I don't want to eat anything overly spicy because I feel like it makes the baby a little extra fussy. So I wanted Ryan to sample it first. So I told Ryan, I said, just take a little tiny nibble uh, just on the tip of your tongue, just to see how spicy it is. But he stuck the whole thing in his mouth. <laughs> and oh, poor Ryan, bless his heart. He started like sweating and it was really very spicy. So then we Googled it after the fact. We should have Googled it before the fact. And it's not crazy off the charts on the Scoville scale. However, for a family that doesn't eat a ton of really, really hot foods, it was spicy for us. With that being said, I'm going to keep these particular peppers in their own basket so that they don't get mixed up with the other ones. you guys can hear all the sounds around me right now on the camera. First thing in the morning, there's just a different sound of everything kind of waking up and getting ready for the day. There's some crows making noises behind me, but it also just seems like all the insects are buzzing and starting to wake up. It's very peaceful. I like it. There's a lot of dew on everything this morning too, which is really beautiful. It makes the grass look like it's shimmering and has glitter all over it. The way all the birds are talking to each other right now, it's hard to be out in nature and not appreciate God's goodness. Creation's pretty cool. Now, if I had the time, I would wait until it is hotter in the day and the dew has all evaporated off of all the plants before I harvest them, but we don't really have time to do that today, so I'm going to do it when I can do it, and that's right now this morning. I just love the vibrant yellow color on these peppers. So pretty. I typically wear contacts, but I intentionally did not wear my contacts today because I knew I would be handling a lot of these peppers, and especially when we get inside and start cutting them up, because I didn't want to then go touch my eyeball to try to take my contacts out at the end of the day with uh, pepper oils all over my fingers. That just did not sound like a pleasant experience. So, glasses it is today. These glasses, however, don't have, um, like little rubber on them. So they're always sliding down and then I have to pop them back up. 
that's one of the reasons why I prefer contacts. Hi Lucy. Good morning. I'm trying to just pick the yellow peppers, but occasionally I'm accidentally pulling off a whole little bit of a branch. So then I'll go ahead and pick the green peppers on that too. I just bent over for a second and Lucy gave me slobbery kisses all over my glasses. That's another reason why I normally wear contacts. I can see you again. <laughs> we still have a lot more pepper plants to harvest off of, but that does it for the lemon drop pepper anyway. There's still a lot of green ones on the plant, so we'll be harvesting a lot more here in a few weeks. But right now, let's move on to the next variety. The next pepper plant variety I have beside these lemon drop peppers are the sugar rush peach peppers. Now I've seen these get a little bit darker orange in color, but I just went ahead and picked them. There's not a ton on this particular pepper plant, but we'll pick what we have. The sugar rush peach peppers, I was hoping to have a lot more of them this year, but the plants are not nearly as prolific as the lemon drop pepper, for instance. The lemon drop pepper was just completely covered in peppers. The sugar rush peach one, I've only gotten a couple off of each plant this year, which was a little disappointing because I was planning on using a bunch of these sugar rush peach peppers uh, to make some peach salsa, and that didn't end up happening because I didn't have enough. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> The next pepper bush is corbachi peppers. The corbachi peppers look like this. They're like a sweet bell pepper. This is our favorite pepper at the moment for fresh eating and cooking up in recipes. We'll definitely put some of these up in our special pepper blend too though, later on. There's another pepper bush here, kind of tucked in between the two. I'm not sure if this one is a serrano or a jalapeno. I think it's serrano though. It's a little longer and skinnier. There's some red ones hiding down underneath here. This is the color that these peppers turn if you leave them on. I just went ahead and harvested both types while I was out here because there wasn't that many on that particular bush. It's kind of hard to tell in comparison to the big lemon drop pepper, but there's a couple little smaller pepper bushes tucked up underneath these tomatoes here. This next row has peppers planted all along the edge too, so there's a lot more to harvest. First up, some more corbachi peppers. This one looks like the letter C, C for care. And this one I just picked is really spirally. Isn't that cool? The corbachi peppers oftentimes twist themselves into fun shapes, which I think is really cool. However, it does make it slightly more difficult when it comes to processing. It just takes a little extra step to wash and process a twisty shaped pepper than it does 
a really straight one. But I think the fun shapes are cool. And it looks like a C for Kara. It's the little things like that that get me. There's a bunch on this plant. Look at all those. There's some really long ones on this bush too. There's a couple that have started to turn colors over on this side. I've been picking these younger though because sometimes they start to rot as they're turning colors with some of the wetter weather we've been having. Then we just have your traditional California wonder bell pepper. One more pepper bush to harvest, then we'll go inside and put these up. Ugh. Oh, it's just a leaf. I uh, had this leaf kind of sticking to me and it scared me for a second there. That reminds me, the other day when I was harvesting some dahlias, I got stung by a caterpillar. It's called a saddleback caterpillar. I took a little picture of it. I'll see if I can find it on my phone and insert it here. This caterpillar looked kind of crazy. It's like bright lime green and it was rather small, but man, did that thing hurt. I've been a little like skittish ever since then harvesting stuff. I didn't learn my lesson the first time, obviously, and I should probably be wearing gloves, but I'm not. That caterpillar hurt so bad. I ran inside and ran underwater first and that made it worse. But I found the best thing that helped after I tried a few different remedies is I took packing tape and wrapped the packing tape around my fingers where the caterpillar had touched and got like little fibers, I guess, probably out as I was like ripping the tape off. And then I had an Amish drawing salve, 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 that I slathered all over and that made it feel a lot better. But do not touch that caterpillar if you happen to see it in your garden. It may look cool, but that thing packs a punch. That really, really hurt. Anyway, had to throw in that little public service announcement because I just remembered that. Let's go back to harvesting. What are you doing, Lucy? Roll it around. As we move on to the next row, uh, let me introduce myself because we have a lot of new faces that have joined our channel recently. My name's Kara and we're gardening in Virginia in zone seven. So follow along and subscribe if you like gardening and homesteading and cooking and those sort of videos. Welcome, I really am glad that you've joined our channel. Leave a comment below where you're from and if you have a garden or homestead, what kind of projects you have going on. I like hearing about where everybody else is from. Let's go inside to the kitchen and process all these peppers we just harvested. We're gonna put up these peppers by making a pepper powder spice seasoning mixture. There's no set recipe for it, but I'll show you the process and the steps I take to make it. I made some earlier this season already. Let me show you what the end result that we're aiming for will look like. It's in my spice cabinet. So this is the pepper blend spice powder that we're gonna be making today. And this stuff is so good. It adds so much flavor to your food. And I think you guys will really enjoy it. So let's make it. The first thing we need to do is wash up all these peppers. For the most part, these peppers are pretty clean. However, there is a little bit of dirt on them. And Lucy, our red lab was helping me harvest and I was petting her occasionally as I was harvesting. So I do see a little bit of dog hair on some of these. So I'm gonna give them a thorough wash before we process them. I just laid out a kitchen towel to put my peppers on to help speed up the drying process. After I finish washing all of these peppers individually, I want them to be as dry as possible, so I'll leave them out for a little while before I cut them up. 
I'm running out of room here on this mat, so I laid out a few more towels on the kitchen counter that will put the rest of the peppers. God's so cool. I think I say this pretty much every time I harvest something. He could have made everything look and taste exactly the same, but he didn't. He gives us so much variety, like a red pepper, yellow pepper, green pepper, all different shapes, sizes. And I just have like five of the hundreds of, or thousands of pepper varieties there are in the world. That's pretty cool. You have to admit, God's very creative. I've got my trays so I can put the peppers straight onto the tray before we stick it in the dehydrator. For chopping up these peppers, I'm gonna be popping the stems and the tops off of all the peppers, and then just trying to cut them uniform to size. You're supposed to remove the seeds, but to be honest, I don't always remove all the seeds. I'm following the Excalibur cookbook's advice and wearing gloves so that I don't get pepper juices all in my fingers today. We're good to go. <laughs> The lemon drop peppers, I'm just gonna cut the tops off and leave them whole, and I'll cut the other ones up smaller. You can make this pepper powder blend that we're making with any type of peppers you want. However, be cognitive, the spicier the pepper, obviously the spicier your pepper powder seasoning is gonna be. The jar that I made up the other day, I primarily used corbachi peppers with a few of these lemon drop peppers and some paprika peppers and just different random ones I had picked from the garden all blended together. That pepper blend, I'd say is pretty low on the heat scale. And I really like having a milder pepper blend just for throwing in everyday dishes that I don't want a ton of spice in, but I still want lots of flavor. Today's blend, I'm gonna make a little bit spicier because there's gonna be a higher ratio of these lemon drop peppers. Now, I don't have an exact recipe for my pepper blends. It's just basically whatever I harvest from the garden, dehydrated and blended up together. But the one we're doing today definitely is gonna be a little bit spicier because there's a lot of these lemon drop peppers. And that's good because I'm gonna have two jars now, one that's a mild pepper blend and one that's a spicier pepper blend. So I have variety and options when it comes to cooking for which one I grab. Now the other peppers, I'm gonna cut into smaller sections because the lemon drops a smaller pepper in general, so I'm just leaving those whole. Since there's a lot of seeds, I'm gonna use these silicone mats for dehydrating the other pepper varieties. If you want your pepper blend to be less spicy, you could remove the seeds because the seeds pack a lot more heat punch than the flesh of the pepper. For my dehydrator, I have two different types of trays. I have these mesh trays that have little holes in them. And this dehydrates things a lot faster because air can flow from the bottom and the top. However, it does make a little bit of a mess because then little pieces can slip through the holes and seeds and things for peppers. I also have silicone trays in my dehydrator though, which are just these little silicone mats. Again, I'll link them in the description. And I like using these a lot better most of the time, even though it takes a little bit longer to dehydrate because it's a lot less mess and I think they're a little bit easier to clean than to clean these little grates. My main goal when chopping up these peppers is to keep them A, uniform in size as much as possible, and also 
to keep like varieties together while dehydrating on the sheet. That way I can pull a whole tray off the dehydrator if one pepper variety dehydrated faster than another. Let me know in the comments what you like using peppers for in your garden. I'd like to see what everyone's favorite thing to make is. We're gonna put all of our peppers now into the dehydrator. You don't necessarily need a dehydrator to make your own pepper powder though. You can dehydrate your peppers in the oven if your oven temperature goes low enough, or you can also string your peppers. Now, personally, I've never strung my peppers, but that is a method a lot of people use. The biggest thing when dehydrating peppers, or any food really, is that you're not overlapping the food. You still want to have airflow in between each of the items that you're trying to dehydrate. So I'm not putting a big heaping pile of peppers all on top of each other on the trays. I'm just doing a nice even single layer. Now these are admittedly pretty big, so I imagine it'll take longer than the recommended time to dehydrate but I will just check it periodically to see how it's going. These trays really look beautiful with all the different colors on there. I often forget the exact temperatures you're supposed to dehydrate things at. My dehydrator is an Excalibur dehydrator. This is just the cookbook manual that came with it and it has lots of great information about what to dehydrate every type of vegetable and fruit under the sun, at what temperature and for how long. So I always like to reference this just to double check my memory. I wanna say peppers are at 135, but like I said, I'm gonna double check real quick. I do really love my dehydrator. I'll leave a link to the one I have in the description box. I just found the page on peppers I was close. I thought it was 135. It's 125 degrees for four to eight hours, depending on your humidity. So I'll just watch them as they dehydrate to see if they're ready or not. The pre-treatment for peppers, uh, it says just wash them and you can either dice them or leave them whole or cut into strips. Peppers that are diced, however, have better color and aroma because the drying time will be shorter. When cutting peppers, wear rubber gloves to protect your hands. That's a good tip, especially since I have little babies, I have to be handling, I don't want any pepper oils on them. 125 for about eight hours. After the peppers are done dehydrating in the dehydrator, I'm gonna let them cool completely and then I'll use the food processor or the blender to chop them up and that is what's gonna give us our pepper powder. Thanks again so much for watching. My name is Kara. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and like today's video. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Bye y'all.